Hello guys, you're welcome to this channel. Thanks for coming back again if you're a subscriber. And if you're new here, click on the subscribe button and also on the notification bell and endeavor to share and leave a good comment on our videos. So we want to check the physics practical techniques for the Y2025. So we brought this setup as um, a preparatory one which we should just uh, use to brush our mind up about what we might encounter in the examination. So this is not the actual question and no one is creating this. Um, this uh, video is not created for the purpose of malpractice. So let's go through this. So looking at this diagram you see here. So let's see this diagram well. So we can see A, B represents two retort stand. Then one of the retort stand, the clamp is used to hold um, a meter rule, which is label X, as you can see. So now, then the other one is where the spring is hanged with the mass hem, and then you have a particular height between the mass hem and the floor so which is h then the g clamp is used to hold the other um, retort stand a to the base of the table is used to hold the base of the retort stand a to the table and then you have the spring so we have the procedure here the procedure said you are provided with two meter rule, retort stand, spiral spring, mass, hem, and other necessary materials. So, this procedure requires that we measure and record the length L naught of the spring. So, to record the L naught of the spring, you have to remove the mass from the spring and measure the length of the spring originally. So, that's L naught. Then, when you add the mass, you now measure the new length so that's what the next instruction requested that we do suspend the spring on the retort stand a with a thread just like you can see in that diagram so and mass m and the mass m should be attached with a pointer you can see the pointer p here that's the pointer so it's the optical pin you are going to use in place of that so then the P should be at the base of the mass. So measure the new length of the spring, which is L, and find the change in length, which will give you the actual extension caused by the mass that you have hanged on it. Now the next is you are going to adjust the thread such that the height of the mass above the ground would be 100 meter, just like H set H to be 100 meter. Then once you're done, once you're done with that, you try to um, pull the mass M downward below the point. Now, when you hang the mass and you have set the height H to be 100, you would notice that the pointer will point at a particular mark point on this uh, meter rule X. So that is the point where you count your oscillation from so the oscillation will be counted from that point so take for instance this arrow p point at a particular value on this meter let's say 60 so in that wise for instance 60 so when i pull down the like i'm going to pull this down i'm going to apply force to pull it down a little bit so when i pull it down what happens it goes down you know it's a spring so when i leave it it will have to move oscillate in a vertical sense so like up and down oscillation just like what you are seeing on the screen so now when you have that you have to take the number of oscillation when the mass m or when the pointer p let's say when the pointer p returns to that particular marked point that it was before you pull down the mass so you take your oscillation from there like we are going to shoot that video you see what we are seeing in the next slide of this video you see how the practical is being done then after all those that you are going to change the length from 
100, you change it to 80, 60, 40, 20. Then, as you measure the length, I mean, as you change the length, even with the 100, you on your stopwatch and, cap, and record the time taken for 10 complete oscillations. So then, after that, you evaluate T, which is this, equals T over N and T squared. So you do the same for the other height. Then you tabulate your reading and plot the graph of T squared on vertical axis and H on horizontal. Then you find the slope of the graph. Then you evaluate M equals these three formulas you use to evaluate that. So then you state your precautions. So that is it. And what are the precautions you need to state? When you are using the meter rule, you avoid parallax error. You avoid that the pointer, I mean, you take your counting of oscillation as at the point where the pointer returns to the um, marked point or the original point so then that's it so, so this is the setup according to the uh, question you've just gone through now this is the pointer you can see the mass attached to the pointer here so this is going to point towards this so we see the mark point. The first part was to measure the original length. So right now we can't measure it, so we have to release the spring of certain force. And mind you, when you want to measure the original length of the spring, you measure from this edge to this edge. Do not take the measurement of this circular part with it because it does not extend. So this is the only part that extends. So we take the original length, then what original length is you can measure that before hanging the spring then the new length when that mass is hung you can take it also while hanging here yeah? so you take that uh on your own so he said let us assume uh it was at this point uh 65 so we want to oscillate we drag it down a little bit then we allow it to go up like this so as it's going up and oscillating, we, we take record of the time it takes to make a 10 oscillation as it passes from this mean uh, equilibrium point. So it goes up and down like that. So we take 10 complete oscillation and we record the time for that. Then we continue with what the question has asked us to do. So this is how the oscillation will look like. So when it is here and you pull it down and you leave it, you allow it to go up one, two, three, four five six that is how you count so this is the actual um way it's supposed to be so the spring should be directly to the mass so that the string will be up and you can easily adjust so testing the other one we discover it is not as easy as it is so we're going to take the measurement for 100 again so now when we want to take the measurement for 100 we have to adjust the thread upwards so that the distance between the uh, this uh, mass and the floor will be 100 then we take the oscillation again so that is how we're going to do it so now let's check it out when it is 100 when the distance is 100 so we have to measure this is 100 so we have to still take it up so we are talking of this distance now. So this is what we are looking at. Yeah, so we can take our oscillations now. So now, let's start with it. So this is the stopwatch. You just have to click on start and then, so at this point now, when you allow this to balance at equilibrium, so it's showing that it's gonna be around 26. It's, going to, it's around 28 rather. So then we can take it down a little bit and allow to oscillate. So we can take our reading. So one, two, go. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, stop. No, that's it. That's has not hit. So we take it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
6.49 is what we got here. 6.49. So we have to make the distance 80 now. So let's take the distance back to 80. So we can just release this a little bit. So take a look at how it is being reduced. So we take it to 80. So make sure you avoid parallax error. So 80 is when you drop this at 20. So that is at 20. So we can easily measure it from there. So that's 20. So then we go again to take the measurement. So this is actually around 45. So we take it down and allow to zillate. So let's start now. One, two, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's 6.47. Just a little bit, there might be error. So I would uh, like to take 6.47. Okay. Now we take it down to a new length, which is now uh, 60. Take it down to 60. So we go to 60. 60 we fall at 40. So we need to increase the length of the thread. So we take it again. This is now for 40. So we mark the point again. It falls at around 85. So then from this point, you know, the essence of the optical pin or the pointer is to indicate the point where the oscillation will be counted. You understand? So let's bring it down. So we take it up again. One, two, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have six points. Um, this is odd. Okay, I would love to take it again. So that goes to 85. Then we go again. One, two, go. One, two, three, four, five, sorry. One, two, go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's six point three one. Six point three one. Six point three one. This is the result of my experiment. So if you look at the table, so we have done some adjustment to the table by trying to rerun the experiment apart from what we see in the video. You see the values in the time is a little bit different from what we call out because we have to run it all again because the graph was not given what it is. We have this now as the table so the original length of the spring is eight centimeter but after stretching the new length is 72 so if you subtract the original from it it gives 64 so it means the spring is very elastic so then we calculated the time for uh, we recorded the time for 10 complete oscillation for every height and we got this this t small t and then we evaluated the bt and the t squared so this is the graph we plotted from that we plotted this so and then there was intercept so we're going to pick the intercept on both x and y axis so this is the scale used on x axis it was just two centimeters to represent 20 and then on t squared axis we use two centimeters to represent um that's Okay, on there is a mistake here, so it should be two centimeter to um, 0.1 t squared. So even if it is written as y axis, you have to change it to 
t squared axis because you are not plotting y there so look at the graph so the rules of plotting the graph is that when you draw in your gradient it should be very big like up to half of the line then try to make sure all your points are on the line just like this graph now since it's just a run-up experiment so we have two points out of the line so each point out of the line a certain mark will be deducted then make sure you use about 70 percent of your graph sheet more than 50 percent so we have done that so this is changing t square and we have to calculate the slope so we calculated the slope by picking up this on the line and then we have to evaluate what we have here so on evaluating m here because this experiment is likely to determine the value of m so now m is 100 but we got 100.7 grams so it shows the experiment is a little bit consistent so that is just 0.7 difference from the original mass so this is what we have for you guys thanks for watching please subscribe to the channel comment and share the video thank you